Are we alone in this strange and enormous universe in which we exist? The observable universe is approximately 92 billion light years across and it keeps growing faster and faster beyond human comprehension. Given that the universe is estimated to be 13.82 billion years old based on various measurements and that our solar system is only about 4.5 billion years old, we cannot help but wonder if extraterrestrial life even exists. Well, all that might change, as recent claims from Chinese experts assert that the Sky Eye Observatory has detected signals coming from advanced alien civilizations. Why is this signal coming now? Have these aliens been taking their time to invade us? If they do, will we survive? Let's find out. Over the years, humans have created veritable characters of terrifying fictional aliens, including acid-blooded xenomorphs that want to devour us and lay their eggs in our chest cavities, Twilight Zone canamits that want to eat us after fattening us up like cows, and those lizard creatures from the 1980s miniseries V that want to harvest us for food. Around the turn of the 20th century, scientists started looking for extraterrestrial signals. Since the 1980s, teams of astronomers from around the world have participated in the formal search for extraterrestrial intelligence SETI. However, the universe still seems devoid of another life. A new sea of theories opens up when the idea of extraterrestrial life is truly discussed. An unusual event would be the discovery of intelligent extraterrestrial life and, as Carl Sagan, the father of SETI famously puts it, extraordinary claims deserve extraordinary evidence. It would be even more extraordinary if intelligent extraterrestrials also wanted to hijack our planet. But this month, seeing this scenario was a bit simpler. China's enormous Sky Eye radio telescope was said to have discovered unexpected signals from space, according to a story that appeared last week in the nation's state-sponsored Science and Technology Daily. The chairman of an extraterrestrial civilization search team established in China in 2020 was quoted in the article, who claimed that the telescope's narrow-band electromagnetic emissions were different from earlier signals and were currently being looked into. Inexplicably, the story was taken off the internet after other outlets picked it up. It's hard to tell what, if anything, to make of the narrative or its disappearance at this time. It wouldn't be the first time an extraterrestrial search team discovered a signal that seemed noteworthy but later discounted it. However, the news serves as a reminder that there isn't much consensus on how the world should respond to an authenticated message from what appears to be an alien civilization, let alone whether it can be done securely. Aliens coming to Earth is a remote possibility. Despite the current surge in interest in UFO sightings, including NASA's startling declaration two weeks ago that the agency will form a study team to explore what it calls unidentified aerial phenomena. There's a simple reason for this. Space is vast. It's extremely large. No one believes that after decades of seeking extraterrestrial life, civilizations capable of traveling across the galaxy and turning up on our planet's doorstep could exist after decades of searching without success. There have been other cases in the past where alien hunting experts have been misled by human activity, including the latest false alarm, Proxima Centauri, the nearest star system to our Sun, located about 4.2 light years away, may have at least one habitable planet, according to a 2019 discovery by astronomers. Scientists speculated that the signal might have originated from an extraterrestrial civilization because it was a narrowband radio wave generally associated with man-made items. Two years later, studies found that the signal was most likely the result of human equipment malfunction. Between 2011 and 2014, another well-known set of signals originally thought to have originated from extraterrestrial life was discovered to be the work of scientists microwaving lunch. However, sending gigabytes of data over these immense intergalactic distances would be rather simple. After all, humans have been engaging in a form of it through active messaging for decades. Astronomer Frank Drake launched 168 seconds of two-tone sound 
at the star system M13 in 1974 using the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. Even while it seemed like noise, alien listeners might have picked up on a distinct repeated structure that suggested its origin was artificial, precisely the kind of signal that radio telescopes like China's Sky Eye are searching for on Earth. Such active messaging initiatives were divisive from the beginning. Aside from a disagreement about who should decide on behalf of Earth when we try to say hi to aliens and what our message should be, sending our presence and location to unknown aliens could be intrinsically risky. After receiving the Arecibo transmission, then astronomer royal Martin Ryle noted that any beings out there might be nasty and hungry. Despite these worries, efforts to intentionally broadcast to extraterrestrial civilizations who are quite likely to be older and more technologically advanced than we are, have continued, as Sigal Samuel noted in a 2019 piece about a crowdsourced contest to update the Arecibo message. But we shouldn't be so certain that the best way to find extraterrestrial life is to quietly listen for space messages. There are catastrophic world dangers of finding an extraterrestrial AI communication during the search for sentient life, Russian transhumanist Alexei Turchin wrote in 2012. Our attention is drawn to an alien civilization's non-natural radio beacon in space. The instructions on how to construct an unimaginably sophisticated computer that could produce an extraterrestrial AI are sent via a nearby radio transmitter. It's the equivalent of an all-out phishing attack. If an intelligent alien AI were to take control of Earth's infrastructure, it could do so the same way a virus takes over a computer. Similar concerns have been voiced in the broader existential risk community. Do we have any options for defending ourselves? We may, of course, opt not to create the computer for the aliens at all. Turchin, however, predicts that the message would also include bait in the form of claims that the computer might, for instance, resolve our greatest existential problems or grant unrestricted power to those in possession of it. As far as existential threats go, cosmic malware pales in comparison to climate change or man-made pandemics. The more exoplanets we find with the potential to support life, the more puzzling it becomes that we have yet to find any proof of that life. Someone, or something, would have to be out there to send that malicious message. Where is everybody? Physicist Enrico Fermi reportedly asked his co-workers during lunch in 1950, while working at Los Alamos National Laboratory, where is everybody? He had been considering the unexpected dearth of evidence for life beyond our planet. Fermi reasoned that there must be other sentient civilizations out there in a universe that had existed for around 14 billion years and produced more than a billion trillion stars during that time. So, where are they? In what became known as the Fermi Paradox, scientists have proposed dozens of solutions. Even now, we don't know and the Fermi Paradox has only become stronger. Since the 1950s, people have driven an electric sports car into orbit around the sun for pleasure, sent a probe beyond our solar system and even set foot on the moon. There must have been plenty of time in our 13.8 billion year old universe for other civilizations to have advanced to a similar level and much beyond. If humans could evolve from simple wooden tools to these mechanical marvels in less than a million years. Meanwhile, we'd expect to see lingering radio signals or other visual evidence of their proliferation. Is it a blessing or otherwise that we are all by ourselves? Whichever position you hold, the possibility that we might be the only creatures in the universe raises difficult scientific and philosophical issues. Is our rarity something to be happy about or disheartened by? What would it mean if we were the only sentient beings in the cosmos to be conscious? The answer to this final question is critical. We are not only depleting our natural resources at an unsustainable rate, but we have also reached a technical point in human history where we can control the entire future of our species. We quickly produced enough nuclear weapons to wipe out every person on the planet multiple times 
and we gave our leaders ready access to them. New technologies have emerged every decade with a growing potential for both enormous good and enormous bad. The doomsday clock at the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists reached its closest point to midnight on the eve of the new year. An unacceptably high possibility, given the stakes, is suggested by estimates from several experts in existential risk that there is a 5-19% to chance that all human beings will be extinct by the end of this century. The moral weight of the billions of future individuals who would never get to carry out their existences as well as the fact that this dark gamble affects the 7 billion of us who are living today makes it plain that we urgently need to get our act together. In all this immensity, there is no suggestion that help will arrive from elsewhere to save us from ourselves, as Carl Sagan memorably remarked in his 1990 Pale Blue Dot Address. The Earth is where we take our stand because it is the only planet that has been discovered so far to support life. We bear a responsibility that is truly tremendous if humankind is the only civilization that may ever exist in the universe. If. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.